Well, good morning, folks. <laughs> Just doing a little puttering in the workshop this morning. Had to do a little repair job on the bird feeders. <laughs> you know, our neighbors, <laughs> they tend to wander in the yard from time to time and uh, kind of have their way with the bird feeders. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've fixed them before and I'm fixing them again. Oh, we get a lot of enjoyment feeding the birds. A tremendous amount of enjoyment and I don't plan on stopping just because of the bears. Uh, we take the bird feeders in at night, put them back out in the morning and uh, you know so far so good. Every now and then I gotta do a little re repair job but that's just the way it is. Well, see if I can get this one ready to hang back up again. <laughs> garden, huh? It's a jungle. I love it. Most flower gardens doing crazy too, huh? Got nuts. Hey, remember when I was showing you the morning glories? They were just starting to come up the pole. Look at them now, huh? They come all the way up. Um, I don't see any blossoms yet though, but when that comes into bloom, it's going to be real pretty. Yeah, petunias. Look at them. Real pretty ones there. Yeah. A little Johnny jump ups, they're doing great. Everything is doing great. I want to show you a few things that have been exceeding my expectations. I like it when things turn out better than I thought. Well, for one thing, the first year garden, look at it. Normally, first year gardens are a flop, and this has just gone nuts. The same with the flower gardens, have just been incredible. Now, when we were building the greenhouse, and then it got going, and on a sunny day in the wintertime, it might be 30 degrees outside, but if the sun was shining like it is today, I showed you that there was more than one occasion it was over 100 degrees in the greenhouse. It was mind-blowing. I couldn't believe how hot it got in there just by the sun during the day. So that, of course, had me concerned how hot it would get in the summer. And I shared a few of my thoughts that I might have to do. I might have to uh, set up some fans and things like that. But I got to tell you, folks, I don't have to do a thing. Come on, I'll show you. That's a pretty hot day. It's clear sky, bright sun, okay? You can see stuff in the greenhouse here. I just leave the door of the workshop open, although I'm going to put a screen door here. All right. So in here, all right, look, at the, look at the sunflowers, they're almost touching the rafters. All right. Everything is just going cuckoo in here. We've been picking beans like crazy. Yeah. Yep. We got some pretty decent tomatoes here on the vine in here. Uh, we picked the zucchini out of this, but we might just yank that out of here because, you know, it's been a, some of our experiments are good, some not so good. The Swiss chard, we've been picking a lot. Anyway, when we built the greenhouse, I put a window up there, which is open now, for that hot air to escape. And I really figured I would need a fan on that. I also thought that I might have to cut that panel and make those three panels as one panel so it could open like an awning. I figured I'd have to do that. I never finished up here because I figured I would have to put some duct work to suck that heat out through some gable vents with a solar fan. Because like I said, in the winter it got over 100 degrees in here, so what's going to happen during the summer, right? All right, so here it is. Uh, pretty hot day. It's, um, I don't know, about 80 outside. Maybe even a little warmer, I'm not sure. But in here, in the greenhouse, and all I do is I have these two double doors are open. That window is open, and the door to the shop is open. And it causes like a wind tunnel. It's just like a vacuum, and it sucks the air right through here with no fans. Right here, looks like about 84 degrees. 
Okay? Now, 84 degrees, that's about what it is outside. Now, you would think, because it's so hot in here, that it's going to be really hot in my workshop. It's not. Look at it. This side of the wall, it's nice and shady. In here, it's looking like it's 64 degrees. 64 in here, with no fans blowing or anything. That's fantastic. You can't argue with that. That's way better than I thought it would be. So, I want to show you something else that has exceeded my expectations. Huh. Remember when I put up my shelter logic? <laughs> the mixed bag of comments I got on that. A lot of people, you know, talking it down and everything else. Well, let me show you. I've got nothing but good news to report. When we put this up, I said that there were some things I wanted to do. I wanted to secure the perimeter a little bit better. Uh, I've had some ideas of making it a little bit more secure. Never got to those plans. It's still in the exact same condition as when we put it up. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you have seen that we get some pretty crazy weather up here. We get pounded with snow. From a lot of the comments that people have thrown at me, hey, I was skeptical about it. Like I said, we paid, I got this on sale. It was a big markdown. It was 199 bucks. Now that, I can't find them that cheap mm -hmm. anymore. We needed some quick shelter. I put it up. I thought if it got us through the winter, great. Well, it got us through the winter it suffered no injuries. I've never had to struggle with the, with the zippers. Nothing. The only thing is, people said, you got to come out and brush the snow off, which I did. I came out, and you see it would be sagging down. Use a push broom, push the snow up. Had no problems with it. And it's, hey, it served us well. You know, I built the frame here. I built a frame that I mounted this to it, and then I filled it up with uh, crushed gravel, and it's been awesome. For a couple hundred dollars, this has been a great garage. Much better than having that under a tarp. Yeah, so I wanted to do a little update on this because a lot of folks have been asking me how it worked out for us, would I buy another one, stuff like that. Would I buy another one? Absolutely, and I plan to. This was the 10 by 15 model. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, I haven't found them as cheap as what we got them for. They're running around $300 on sale, I believe. But sooner or later, a good sale is going to come up, and maybe I can get it when Tractor Supply has that 15% Neighbors Club discount. That would be cool. Well, hey folks, beautiful morning here, although we got some thunder showers coming in. I'm just out walking my trails. I've been working on my trail system out in the back 40 here, and it's doing my body good. Getting a little bit done, kind of feeling my old self again. It's been great. So I want to give you a little medical update and also take a moment to talk about assumptions. My God, what people will do, they'll take the time out of their busy day to try to kick a man while he's down. Well, let me tell you what, it's a futile attempt because I am not down. I am up and out and doing everything that I love on my property here. And when you leave your stupid comments, you don't get under my skin you get in my stupid comments folder. Yeah, so I wanna just take a moment here to address some of these stupid assumptions that people have made about me leaving the hospital early. All right. You know, when I was in my early 20s, 
Ah, uh, I was making stupid assumptions about something. I don't remember what it was because it was too long ago. But what I do remember is I was saying something to this old guy and he says, you're making assumptions. And whenever you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. And I go, what do you mean? And then he goes, A-S-S-U-M-E, you know, assume. <laughs> I don't know, I, I got a chuckle out of it. But he was right because the, all I was was making assumptions. I was getting kind of ticked off at the assumptions I was making, which couldn't be further from the truth. And it was just a waste of emotion. And I learned back then that I shouldn't make assumptions, okay? All right, I was in my early 20s and I learned something. I was in here the other day, a lot of trees falling across my trail. I can come back and harvest those when the weather gets a little bit cooler. We'd whack this down. This is the best therapy that I know. Therapy for the mind and body. Getting my strength back, getting my wind back, my mental health, my attitude, everything is 100%. Yeah, God, I just love these ferns out here. Isn't this gorgeous? This is my backyard, folks. It's freaking awesome. Stupid comments filter into my inbox on a daily basis. I don't give them the time of day, I just delete them. I'm bringing these up because, <laughs> I, I don't know, I just don't get it. I, I don't understand what motivates some people to do what they do. Uh, maybe you can shed a little light on it for me. But, you know, I, just, I get out of the hospital after having a very serious issue that had me circle in the drain. But yet, I post a 30 minute video that I thought was a really nice video. All right? It took a long time to edit that thing. Uh, it's absolutely free to watch, cost you nothing. But the only thing to get some people typing is to throw me an insult. Throw me a little dig. I, I just can't wrap my head around it, folks. I, I never once told you where my cancer was or what the doctor's orders were or what the hospital policy was because of all this COVID-19 stuff. All I said was 29 hours later, I was home after my surgery. That's it. And I didn't take the painkillers, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. So 29 hours in the hospital, I was out the door and back on the mountain. Following doctor's orders, this crap that I should have gone home and rested a few days and I would have escaped all of this trouble, that's crap. I rested for three weeks, all right? I rested, did light duty stuff, walked like I was supposed to, but eight days into my recovery, I developed a pain right here in the back of my rib cage. Every breath I took shot pain through my rib cage. I got right on the phone, called the hospital. They said, it's probably just muscle spasm, take the painkillers. Well, when I know what the pain is, like surgical pain, all right, I didn't need painkillers, I managed it on my own. I don't wanna put all those toxins in my body if I don't have to, but to try and hide pain where you don't know where the pain is coming from is stupid. Because the pain is there because your body is trying to tell you something tell you something is wrong, all right? So I didn't feel right about taking the painkillers, all right? Had a tough night. The next day, I go back to the hospital. I'm in front of my surgeon, and he's going, does it hurt here? Does it hurt here? I'm going, no, no. It hurts when I breathe, and I could barely talk, and Lori was right there with me, all right? I could barely talk because every breath Every time I talked, it would make me exhale, which would make me inhale, which would hit a wall of pain and shoot pain through my rib cage. All right, go home and take the painkillers. 13 hours later, I arrive in an ambulance 
the ER. They knew right was go what was going on. Eight days post-op, spike in a fever, hurts when you breathe. That's textbook for blood clots in your lungs. <laughs> All right? All right. It's going to take a great deal of pain for me to, like, <laughs> leave the mountain and go to the ER, especially to call an ambulance. If I had taken those painkillers, I wouldn't have been in as much pain, right? The painkillers, those heavy narcotics that they were trying to tell me to take, would have knocked the pain down, I would have blown it off, and I would probably be dead. I would either be dead or I would have had a stroke or those blood clots would have clogged up some other artery causing more damage than they did. So this is why I'm sharing this with you folks because if you have some really bad pain and you don't know where it's coming from, maybe it's a better idea not to take those painkillers. Find out what is causing you the pain, okay? Because by following my own intuition on that, I probably saved my life. All right? So where these people get off by typing all of this crap, telling me that I didn't follow hospital protocol, I left early, where, what? Please share with me what motivates you to type that crap. A nice... 30 minute video and you fire that crap at me, I don't get it. All I can say is I pity the poor bastard that is on trial if you're sitting in the jury box because you're going to hear the opening statement from the prosecution and it's guilty! I feel sorry for you folks. But on the flip side of that coin folks, there Luckily, there's more good people than bad. There's so many well wishes and prayers, and positive energy thrown my way, and it's done me a world of good. I am one month post-surgery. All my surgical pain is gone. All my incisions look like old scars. I'm feeling great, and doing what I'm doing out here is the best thing for me, because it's expanding those lungs, making me suck in that mountain air, giving me everything that I need for a full recovery. Yeah. All right. So that's all I'm going to say about that. It amazes me what some humans will go through just to display their ignorance and arrogance. Well, I sure get some typing. Well, let me tell you what there, Einstein. With this COVID-19 shit going around, the hospital wanted them up and walking within 24 hours. Yes, 24 hours. And walking at home will be much safer than the hospital corridors. So we followed doctor's orders and shipped out. That's right, doctor's orders. But Jameson Cross took the time to say, had you followed protocol in the hospital and rested a few days, you probably wouldn't have had all this trouble. Ha, huh. well, thank you, Doogie Hauser. You think you know it all, but you don't know Jack. And Paul Joey, yes, Paul Joey, sharing more brilliance. He says, you checked out against medical advice. You bypassed aftercare by your MD. Sounds like your religion isn't working for you. Huh, I like how he drags religion into it. Nice try there, numb nuts, but oxycodone is an aftercare. Maybe you watch too much Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Better watch out there, boss man. These folks can do no wrong and they'll retaliate like a disgruntled schoolgirl. And Darlene Martinez, yeah, there's another one. She says, oh, I'm sorry, but leaving the hospital early was a mistake. Live and learn, right? Well, that's funny. The doc said he'd be up and out within 24 hours. The boss left after 29. That's five hours late, not early. Maybe you should reset your watch before you start typing. More stupid assumptions unsupported by facts. If I posted this nonsense, I'd be so embarrassed I'd hide under a rock or behind a stick. story here folks if you want to be showcased in a stupid comments video just leave a stupid comment and we'll have a field day with it Frankie and the boss out walking in the woods living life happy and free tracks in the snow everywhere they go there's a pokey way up in that tree 
A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss